A lot has changed for the bad boys. It's been almost 30 years since Will Smith and Martin Lawrence first teamed up as Miami detectives in their 1995 action movie, and while they're still working cases together in the fourth movie, Bad Boys, Ride or Die, Time and Age, has finally caught up to them. Mike Lowry, Smith, and Marcus Burnett, Lawrence, are both more aware of their mortality than ever and are concerned about the legacy they're going to leave, especially when their late captain, Joe Pantoliano is posthumously framed in a massive corruption conspiracy. They must go on the run to clear his name, as well as their own reputations. But there are a few things you need to remember before going into Bad Boys, Ride or Die because some key storylines and twists carry over from 2020's Bad Boys for Life. So whether it's been a while since you saw the third movie in the franchise, or you skipped that one and still want to see the fourth film, we aren't judging. Here's everything to know before going to the theater. Captain Howard's death looms large. In one of the third movie's biggest twists, Mike and Marcus' boss and friend, Captain Howard, was gunned down in front of Mike. He died immediately, but he still returns to have a large presence in the new film. He appears multiple times via video messages recorded before his death, alerting Mike and Marcus to a larger conspiracy within law enforcement with ties to cartel crimes. Mike and Marcus' goal in this installment is to clear Captain Howard's name by exposing the real traitors framing him. To do so, they join forces with advanced Miami Metro operations agents Kelly, Vanessa Hudgens, and Dorn, Alexander Ludwig, who Mike teamed with in the third movie to find the people who tried to kill him. That team was led by Mike's ex-girlfriend, Rita, Paula Nunez, who was promoted to captain at the end of Bad Boys for Life for helping to save Mike from his other ex-remember Mike's son, Armando. Captain Howard's killer also returns, but he's now kind of one of the good guys. The third movie's final twist revealed that the assassin is actually Mike's long-lost son, Armando. In Bad Boys for Life, we learn that Mike had fallen in love with Isabel Aretas, Kate Del Castillo, the wife of a cartel kingpin, while undercover, and she secretly had his baby after he sent her to prison. After escaping prison at the beginning of the third movie, she sends Armando to unknowingly kill his own father after murdering Captain Howard. But in the final action scene, Mike reveals the truth to Armando, and when Isabel tries to shoot Mike, Armando steps in front of the bullet, saving his father. In Ride or Die, Armando remains in prison, but Mike is still determined to form a relationship with his son. First, they work together through bars as Armando helps identify cartel criminals connected to Captain Howard's case, and then they go on the run when Mike and Marcus end up being framed as well. Nothing like some good quality, father-son bonding. True Bad Boys fans could never, but if it's been a while since you watched Bad Boys 2, it's worth refreshing your memory about Reggie because he has a major moment in Ride or Die. Played by Dennis McDonald, Reggie had a small but memorable role in the second film as the guy taking Marcus' daughter Megan, Bianca Bethune, out on a date. In one of the franchise's most quoted scenes, see above, Marcus and Mike give Reggie a hard time when he comes to pick up Megan jointly intimidating and swearing at the young man while waving a gun in his face. When they ask Reggie how old he is, and he says 15, Marcus delivers the famous line, Mother fur, you look 30. While Marcus never seems to warm up to Reggie entirely, he does become part of the family. In Bad Boys for Life, we learn Reggie is now a Marine staff sergeant and Megan's husband. They even have a baby boy named Marcus, which Reggie suggests out of respect towards his father-in-law. And in Ride or Die, Reggie finally gets to show Mike and Marcus what he's really made of. Bad Boys. Ride or Die hits theaters June 7th.